Hello, and welcome to the Butterfly Sage. On today's episode, we are going to talk about how to plan and start a butterfly garden. The first step may seem obvious to most of us, but it is important, is you need to plan and choose where you're going to put your butterfly garden. And the reason why it's important is because you need to figure out, as with all types of gardens, no matter what garden you start, you need to figure out how much sun comes in certain areas of your yard and how much shade that area gets. And I can tell you that most butterfly plants need full sun. So if you are, if you have a yard where it's mostly shade, then you're probably, and you, you may only have one or second, one or two spots where you can actually plant those plants that need full sun. So you won't have much choice and that's where you should probably put your butterfly garden. Unless you already have some sort of really beautiful cottage garden that's already got so many nectar plants, then maybe you want to leave it. But if you want to start a butterfly garden, choose the spot that gets full sun because most butterfly plants take full sun with the exception of the common snowberry bush, which is a host plant for our local checker spot. And the bleeding heart. Which is a. Also needs shade. And that is for the American Apollo butterfly. Butterfly that we get in our area. And I'm, I'm not sure if all of America gets. The American Apollo. But anyways. Those are a couple plants that do require shade. But. Most butterfly plants do require full sun. So that is the first step is planning on where you want to put your garden and figuring out how much sun and shade to that area. The second step is to look up what butterflies come to your area because not every butterfly comes to the whole entire country some only stay in the pacific northwest some stay in the west as in going like colorado wyoming all the way down south some go on the eastern part but not in the midwest over here just butterflies go to different areas and then there are some butterflies that are all the way across the united states and up into canada and down to mexico so it kind of depends on what butterflies you want to figure out what butterflies come to your area and there are a few ways of doing that one is you can just look it up in google and take some time to figure out what sites are better or you can listen to me and go to a couple sites that are great so gardenswithwings.com is a great site for beginners and they are not super thorough because they don't have every single butterfly that comes to your area but the common ones so gardenswithwings.com if you go there click into their thing they have a part where you can type in your zip code and they will put up a page of common butterflies in your area and that is how I started was gardenswithweens.com and how I found that out was when I first decided I wanted to start a butterfly garden I went on to Facebook and joined a local Pacific Northwest gardening group because guys I am like I should say I was a black thumb like I do not have a green thumb I am not good with plants and I was really concerned and worried that I'd be able to keep any plants alive to be honest so I joined the most local gardening group that I could find on Facebook because the more local for you the better because certain plants grow better in some areas of the country than others and if you're from a different country like UK or India or Canada you can find your own local garden groups on Facebook probably at the more local the better. So I joined that. I joined a Pacific Northwest gardening group and then I found a butterfly group. It wasn't local to the Pacific Northwest, but they were more familiar with butterflies and butterfly plants, which helped tremendously as well. So you can, and that is how I found out about the gardenswithweens.com was through the butterfly group, the butterfly gardening group that I joined. So gardenswithweens.com is a great way to start to figure out what butterflies come to your area. You can also look up and join in your local state university butterfly extension. For instance, I'm in Oregon. If I typed in OSU butterfly extension, 
it would come up with a page of different wildlife gardens and they have a thorough list of all the different butterflies that come to the Pacific Northwest and what not only do they have um, what type of butterflies come to my area but they also have the name of the host plants and nectar plants to those butterflies so much more detail so much more information in your state university lists so i encourage you to type in your local state university i can't guarantee that every state university has a butterfly extension but maybe find a the nearest state to you nearest state college to you that does have a butterfly extension i know ohio state university has one as well i just happened upon that because osu i typed in osu and ohio came up once <laughs> but uh, definitely look into your state colleges and get more thorough information on which butterflies come to your area and they may have the host plants for those butterflies and the nectar plants for those as well which brings me to my next two points is the third point is once you figure out what type of butterflies come to your area figure out what type of host plants those butterflies need so that when those mama caterpillars coming through your yard drinking some nectar and they look around and say oh, there's a plant that my babies can eat and they'll stay i am of the mindset where you where i i have a saying feed them and they will come plant them and they will stay so um, you want to get those host plants specific to those butterflies because as i said in a previous one milkweed is not a host plant we all know that milkweed is a host plant for monarchs, but it is not a host plant for every single type of butterfly. It can be a great nectar source for other butterflies too, but it's not a host plant for every single butterfly. Different breeds of butterflies need different types of host plants for their caterpillars. For instance, in my area, we get great spangled fritillaries and their host plants are violets. And I'm not talking the African violets that you get at every store. I'm talking the native to North America violets and those at first were not easy to come by it was really hard to find native plants host plants some like for instance some other native plants that butterflies need nettle the tortoise shell Milbert's tortoise shells into my area they need nettle and gardenswithwing.com said false nettle but false nettle is not local to my area so I was trying to find some steaming nettle, which, yeah, yikes, got to be careful about that. But I did, I finally found some native nurseries in my area. And one of the ladies just had steaming nettle grown out in her backyard, actually. And she's like, here, do you want some? And I said, sure. And so I was able to find it. You've got to find these local native nursery growers to find host plants. There's not a lot of host plants in your local your regular big store plant operations i won't name them all but there's you won't find a lot of host plants in your basic garden nurseries stores in your area so look for your local native nurseries and two that i go to normally are um suave island nursery portland nursery and echo valley native nursery echo valley used to be in oregon city but they moved to sandy it's a little farther away so that stinks for me but anyways those are the closer native nurseries that i have found to my area and you will just have to look up in on google for your state and your area for native nurseries but i encourage you to look up native nurseries in your area so you can find host plants for the butterflies in your area now you can find great nectar sources at those big store nursery companies you know everybody sells cone flowers everybody sells black-eyed susans you can find nectar sources everywhere but the host plants are a little bit more difficult to find i wish the big store companies would sell that but it might put the native nurseries out of business so it's probably good that they don't so anyway um the gardenswithweens.com that page of butterflies for your local area they also will have a list of host plants and my next point nectar plants for that particular butterfly some butterflies like certain nectar plants more than others there's even certain lists that monarchs like certain host plants are not host plants certain nectar plants 
more than other different types of nectar sources. I mean, they obviously need milkweed for host plants, but there are other nectar sources that monarchs love too, like liatris and jobiweed and bee balm. So there's just other nectar sources that those butterflies prefer. The great spangled fritillary, they're not picky when it comes to nectar sources. They're host plants, they only got one, just the violets, but nectar sources, they've got everything listed. Passion flower, uh, yarrow, milkweed, butterfly weed, black eyed Susans, and <laughs> Coreopsis. They've just got a lot of, they're not picky when it comes to nectar sources. But you wanna look, it will help attract those butterflies if you look and figure out not only what host plants do their caterpillars need, but what type of nectar sources do those butterflies prefer. So the four ways to start a plant garden, butterfly garden is, one, figure out where you're going to plant it by figuring out how much sun and shade are in your garden in that area where you want to plant it. Two, look up what butterflies come to your area. Three, figure out what type of host plants those butterflies in your area need. And four, figure out what type of nectar plants those butterflies prefer. So that's how you start and plant a butterfly garden. And I will be showing you some pictures of how I started my chicken scratch. I am not an artist, a sketcher at all. I'm terrible, not one of my fortes. I can sing, but I cannot draw worth to save my life. Anyway, I will show you some pictures of how I planned and started my garden and hopefully they will show up on the camera, hopefully. Um, but anyways, that's today's how to plan and start a butterfly garden. Next time I will talk about, give you a little few extra tips on how to make your butterflies want to stop at your garden. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Side note, if you have pets or young kids, please look into which butterfly plants are toxic because there are quite a few that are. And if you do have kids or pets, either A, decide not to do a butterfly garden, or B, when you plant those plants, make sure to put a fence around those toxic plants around your butterfly garden to make sure that your young kids and your pets do not get into them.